Welcome to Soulful Kitchen Podcast. I'm Sun, the Bohemian Vegan. This Own Your Health series is all about the journey to intuitive healing and living in optimal health. Thank you for tuning in to episode seven of season one, Own Your Health. In this episode, I'm joined with the lovely Susan, who is going to share with us how she turned her life around even before she became vegan and how now she has transitioned that into sharing her knowledge by helping others. Welcome to Soulful Kitchen. Hi, how are you? I'm good, thank you. How are you? I'm good, thanks. So we just want to welcome Susan, who's going to be with us today, and it's really nice to meet you. And how's sunny old England? How's it going today? <laughs> yeah, all right. I mean, it's um, it's now absolutely pitch black because it's it's sort of obviously quite late in the in the day here. Yeah, um, it's a little bit cold, a little bit wet, but tri- tri- typical um, British winter. Yeah, ex- exactly. As an Australian, you'd think that you know Australians tend to go to the UK a lot, but yeah. actually, I only went there once. Uh, so far and that was only the year before COVID so 2019 yeah I went there I met oh, yeah. my daughter there yeah so after living in um, India for so long I'd met so many people like from the UK because it's like a really good place to go for yeah. a holiday right and a lot of people live there so um, I had when I went to England I ended up having like so many friends to catch up with that I'd met through my travels. So it was pretty amazing. So where are you based? Where are you based in? So I'm in um, Bedford, which is probably like an about an hour north of London. Ah. So like not too far from sort of like central, yep. but just outside. So we're sort of like in the commuter belt, but it's outside and it's like we're in like a little um, town Yep. But actually, we've got quite a lot of rural villages just around the outside. So it's kind of like close enough. But I love not being right in the crazy. I like being outside yeah. the crazy. Yeah, I'd be the same. I like to have it there if I need it, but not to be yeah. right in the thick of it. Definitely. I yeah, think yeah. If we I want think. to go into the if we want to go into the city, we can jump on a train yeah. and we can be in London in like an hour, an hour and a half. But that that's how far away I like to be from from like a big crazy. <laughs> you know what? It was really funny when I was thinking back on this. Yeah. I was probably the one person that was probably the most unlikely to go vegan. Oh really? You know, I was. Yeah, and I mean, I've been vegan for a good couple of years now, coming up two years, but I really didn't have any discrimination when it came to what I ate. I would eat anything and anything. But the seeds of becoming vegan had started to been sowed over quite a few number of years. But it was only when I made the choice to go vegan that I realised all the little seeds were there along the way. I'd been really focused on sort of like eating healthy for weight loss and health. And I'd gone down sort of like a real health and fitness track. And then funny enough, my vegan journey actually started on a holiday to Mexico. Oh, really? Um, (laughs) <laughs> yeah so it was it was about four years ago we had sort of like our first holiday and we were staying on a resort down by the sort of like Riviera Maya but the resort we stayed on was a real sort of like eco-friendly resort so it still had a lot of the holiday vibe to it but it was eco-friendly it included part of the resort was an animal sanctuary so they had like an old rescue donkey there they had like monkeys running around on the site. It was all, and they they sort of neutralize all of their carbon emissions and they don't have plastics, all of that sort of stuff. And they actually had a fully plant-based restaurant on site. So that was the first time I kind of ventured into a full sort of like plant-based restaurant. And sort of I had, um, I think it was sort of like the first time of trying like plant-based um, tamale, which was absolutely incredible. Um, 
And I was doing a lot of the fitness that was available as well. And that included they had like a yoga teacher. So I was going down and sort of spending time with this um, chap who was teaching yoga every morning. And it was literally like idyllic over a little river that was on the site on the sort of decked area. And while he was teaching us the yoga, he was talking about sort of like the Ayurveda. He was talking about the sister science and, you know, how you should be sort of not eating animals and and all of this sort of philosophy to go with it. And do you know what? I was just sort of more and more, I was thinking this makes so much sense. Yeah, right. But I still saw it as such restriction that I still couldn't work out how I would fit into that. Um, And I started noticing like lots of people that I respected sort of like in the media or or things. I just noticed a lot of people with either vegetarian or vegan and the kind. And it was coming up to Christmas a couple of years ago um, and Game Changers was on Netflix. And I'm sure so many people have watched that. But what I really liked was how that kind of linked the ethics. And I mean, obviously the spiritual, but it linked it all with the science as well in some respects and I know that that documentary was far from perfect but it really was the switch that made me to think do you know what I'm gonna give the veganuary a go I'm gonna sort of go vegan for January um and I mean honestly that was it I I never looked back that's an amazing journey though like and I know what you mean about how um the seeds are there because that was kind of like the same for me it was very much like that my mum was um only ever ate beef so she wouldn't eat any other animal like our whole life growing up we only ate beef which actually is why I think I have so many digestive issues as well but she um she wouldn't eat uh anything other than beef but you should have gone vegan (laughs) you're not just eating cow but you know and then of course yeah I have a very similar kind of like story as well Okay, so can you explain what veganery is and for those that might not know? Yeah, I mean, there's actually, veganery is a non-profit organisation based in the UK. And it's really just, they focus on spreading the vegan message by asking people to try vegan um, and get people to sort of like pledge to go vegan for one month. The biggest emphasis is that they do a real push with January Because, of course, when it comes up to January, a lot of people are thinking about new health and fitness goals anyway. So they do a lot of campaigning around this time of year to sort of say, well, start the year by giving up animal products for one month. Try vegan for a month. But they link it. So it's like when I signed up two years ago, I was getting daily um, emails of sort of like support and advice and they give you free cookbooks and lots of links to different resources. And the reason why I liked it was because it feels like sometimes you got to go all in on something. And I'm very much an all or nothing person. And I know that's what I'm like. It's like, if I say I'm going to go vegan, I'm going to go in 100%. I'm not, I don't mess about with things. I just do things. It's not something you can do secretly and think, well, if I don't like it, I can back out of it. Because of course, there's so many things you've got to change. You can't like secretly become vegan Because the minute you go out to eat or drink, people start realising. I didn't want to try something and fail or be seen to fail. And then that lessened the the thing that I was trying to do. So I thought, well, do you know what? And my family were very like, you know, we're we're based up around sort of like meat and two veg. There's always been meat. It's always been a thing. Um, and I thought they they need a little bit of getting into this idea as well. So telling them that, right, I'm going to do this for January. I'm going to go vegan for a month and see what it's like. And it's part of this pledge. It made it really easy for me to transition into it with kind of like a get out clause if I needed it. But I think within like two days of going vegan, I was like, oh, that's it. This is it. I'm never going back. But it kind of let my family get their head around it. And towards the end of the month, they all started asking like, so what happens at the end of the month? And I'm like, no, I'm just going to carry on. I was like, I've really enjoyed this. I'm going to just keep going. And they were like, oh, what? You're actually going to stay vegan? I'm like, yeah. (laughs) Why would I not? (laughs) 
And have any of your other family members gone vegan because of you? Um, I've I've sort of transitioned them more into sort of plant based eating. Yep. Um, my mum and dad love coming around here to eat, and I'll always cook for them. Um, they they haven't transitioned fully, but they now have reduced their meat consumption a lot. Yeah. Um, my my partner, um, my wife Donna, she kind of went vegetarian with me because I do all of the cooking but she was still having some dairy things included because she absolutely was like addicted to chocolate and she was like I'm I can't give up like Cadbury's chocolate um but then like throughout the last couple of years more and more like vegan alternatives are available so now she's gone completely vegan sort of like about six months behind so she was just still having some dairy. And then about six months into it, she said, Do you know what? I'm just going to go vegan with you. And we, so we, yeah, we've done it together as a, as a partnership, really. Oh, that's lovely. That's really nice. And I think, um, like, I think that's one of the hardest things, you know, if you are transitioning into anything, like, even if you're giving up, like, say, for instance, you're giving up smoking or you're giving up something, you know, that is, is part of or being part of you and everyone around you actually is used to you having that habit or that way of eating in this case yeah. so you know and and as we know like veganism is becoming a much more global thing but it's also still a minority like we're getting there but we're not quite, yeah. you know, like it's definitely improved a lot since I became vegan it's still got that element of we're a little bit different when you find yeah. someone who's you know this like willing to change with you or to be able to understand where you're at and be empathetic to that then yeah, yeah, hold on to them. <laughs> yeah, them. Definitely. Do you know what? It's been so amazing that we've been on the journey together. And it's really funny because I'll much more naturally identify as a vegan because, you know, the, the minute I sort of transitioned my food, everything else slotted into place. That's where I could see the path that I'd been on. And suddenly, like, I, I talk about, you, you know, like people talk about like the cognitive dissonance between sort of when you're feeling empathetic, but you're still sort of participating in eating meat. I didn't necessarily have that until afterwards. But then I kind of realized that the dissonance was the fact that I didn't have the guilt because I, I, I didn't have the empathy because I didn't have the guilt. So the minute I took away eating animal products, suddenly the compassion was able to be there. Whereas before I was sort of not compassionate, taking away the meat products, I've seen the ethics, I've seen all the other factors coming into place. Whereas my partner Donna, she'll sort of much happily sort of sit within more sort of like plant based eating is that she eats completely vegan, but I don't think she's quite there on all of the ethics yet. Yeah. I, I say it is an enli- it's an enlightenment. It is definitely yeah. an enlightenment. And I think you shouldn't force people. And that's that's one thing I, I was saying in another podcast, how when I first was vegan, I did jump on board all the kind of groups and stuff around. And I found them actually more unsupportive than supportive because they were very, very kind of like, um, pet, you know, sitting on their pedestal, looking down, kind of thing. So yeah. yeah, but since you know, like I, I also was new. So you know, and now I get on and I actually help other vegans that are transitioning because I feel that you know you need support with anything, whether it's yeah. coming from someone you don't particularly know, but you're doing something very different and very new and you know, for yourself. So it's important to feel like you have support, definitely. And everyone's journey is their own journey. So it doesn't matter, you know, like where you are in the journey or what, 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 yeah. yeah. So it's, as I say, always that every little bit makes a massive difference. You know, if you decide to have meatless Monday or you just go, you know, um, reduce back on your meat or you start to get more of the ethics. There's just, you have to do your own bit and not feel pressured. That's the main thing, you know? Yeah. And that's one of the main things I've taken away from it is that there's no, there's no one picture of what a vegan needs to look like or how you need to do it. Absolutely. And I think there's got to be a lot of freedom to realise that every step in the right direction is a step in the right direction. When I decided to go vegan, the first thing I wanted to make sure was like, you know what, I'm not going to jeopardise my health because I was really sort of like exercising a lot on sort of like a real health and fitness journey. 
And I thought, you know what, I want to make sure I can do this and and not be compromised in any way. Because I thought the best way I can sort of advocate for eating vegan is to do it and remain as strong, remain as healthy and just show off how good it can look to be vegan. So I literally sort of like did an online course in vegan nutrition, not because I necessarily wanted to practice with that, but I thought, you know what, I'm going to make sure that I really understand the nutrition of it spot on. So I did like an online diploma in vegan nutrition and did loads of other bits. And like you, I joined um, a local um, group that we've got here and sort of because I wanted to sort of make friends and maybe join in a bit of the activism. And I tried it once and it was so not for me. I'm like, <laughs> hold on, standing there sort of trying to sort of like battle people into it. I was sort of very much a silent partner holding a place card. I didn't want to speak, but they're sort of really going at it. And I thought that would never have made me go vegan in the first place. That that was just not my type of activism. And I thought, you know what? I get more and more comments from people looking at what I eat and go, but your food looks amazing. And I go, well, yeah, it is. (laughs) You know, and they're like, well, you know, it's always the added on question. It's like, don't you miss bacon? And I'm like, no, I don't miss that. (laughs) Why would I miss that when I've got so many foods I can enjoy no, no, no. And it's just that. It's like people, you know, you've got to find your way of, of advocating for what you do. And for me, it's showing how much I thrive and love it, yeah. not anything negative, because that wouldn't have motivated me. People telling me don't do this, I normally turn around and go, I'll do it even more. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Tell me not to do something, I'll do more of it. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. It's funny, actually, um, that we're talking about, like, the the food because, um, and I want to ask you a couple of questions actually in relation to the food. One of the things for me is that I realized, like, I didn't really miss anything. Like, I guess for me was my final thing. I was already vegetarian. I was already not eating cheese and a, a lot of dairy anyway, because I'd been diagnosed as celiac, which in effect was really probably because my digestive system was just, you know, so bad. And so now I can tolerate, but I just don't. I just don't because now I'm vegan as well. But yeah, I think it comes down to taste. It's very much about taste. And so when I think about chewing on meat or I see like those Beyond Burgers and other things that look, in fact, I did years ago when I was in Israel buy a burger that was a vegan burger. And to me, it just felt too real, like too much like the actual meat. I've always done like a, a, like usually a turkey roast but I just don't want to put any gluten in my diet anymore so I needed to try and make it without the vital wheat gluten which you know is like a huge part of binding the food yeah. together, right and the other thing is I can't get tofu here so the part that makes it really nice and moist I was like okay I'm just gonna have to try and work this out and I'm so happy with the result. I ended up using pea protein. It's when I tasted it, because it's not really the look, because it just looks like a log, right? And it looks pretty because it's got, you know, rosemary and stuff on it. But I was like, it's, is it going to taste as good? And it was, I actually think it tastes better than the original one that I used to make with the tofu and vital wheat gluten. So I'm very, very happy with it. But it's just taste. Like I liked the taste of rosemary and sage and like having the walnuts and the cranberries and all those kind of things in the actual stuffing. And all that's yeah. vegan anyway. So, yeah, it, it is. I think the mindset of getting someone to to go over into veganism has to come from them. And just like you and me, the little seeds were there and eventually we got there. So, yeah, very much agree with you. I was going to say that that's how I'm vegan now is if I can just plant seeds everywhere I go and just make people think, oh, I, I can try that. That yeah, exactly. that work for me. Yeah, exactly. Definitely. And I think this, like I'm even trying to make my own recipes more simple. But this is more like a hobby for me to put things up on, on social media. But I like to take the time to do it. And sometimes I just think, oh, my gosh, I don't want to have to think about the recipe. You know, I don't want to have to actually like think what ingredients are in it and how many ingredients are in it. And that's what happened with the turkey. I kind of like started it from the base of actually my pepperoni, um, gluten-free pepperoni. And then I just kind of like added in and, and I really enjoy cooking like that where it's just all intuitive, you know, like it, but then afterwards I'm like, 
oh dear, I have to write down the recipe, <laughs> to be honest, you know, so I can share it. So it's like, yeah. okay. So I left no, that- Notepad while you're cooking is vital. <laughs> oh gosh, yeah. I just want to enjoy the cooking sometimes, yeah. Being in England, um, I know that it's a very vegan kind of orient. Like there's a lot of restaurants. I know when I was there, I was like in the supermarkets just going, oh, my God, oh, my God, like grabbing things. You know, I'd been living in India for seven years and I'd been vegan. So I hadn't really experienced what I could experience, you know, obviously in Australia. So when I went to England, it was just like, and same in Israel, I was just like, oh, my God, oh, my God, <laughs> there's all this food that's everywhere. So do you find, like, it's easy for you where you are to eat out and do you have, like, a favourite place that you like to eat? If you yeah, try? I mean, you know, even though we're not, like, in the city, I mean, if you go in into a big city, there's just plenty of choice most places. Even just in Bedford, we've got, like, there's the, the Green Earth Cafe and the Vardos Cafe. And they are two like little independent chains that are completely vegan sort of like cafes. So for like breakfast and lunch and, and coffee and cakes and all that. But I mean, one of my favourite places, which is literally just at the end of our street, we've got a Thai restaurant called The Elephant. And that was I was there actually earlier today with my mum and dad. Um, and we we took them there. That was our like Christmas meal together with my wife. So many of their foods are just naturally vegan. Yeah. So they, we have like the tempura vegetables, which is obviously just their really like batter and vegetables. And like they do, they cook with tofu anyway. So easy to get like tofu satay is a little bit of a treat. But you're right. I mean, we when you said you can't even get tofu, <laughs> I was kind of sort of feeling a little bit like, oh, good grief. <laughs> How how would I survive without tofu? I don't I don't work out. Do we want tofu? It's normally like when I'm doing my shopping. How many how many how much of that do I need? Or which one do I get? Because there's so many choices, yeah. like you know the yeah, yeah, yeah. ones and all that. And that's why it is like I'm like a kid in a candy shop. You know, definitely when I go to more of a westernized country. And I think sometimes yeah. that's what makes the cooking harder for me because I am doing literally everything from scratch. Like I can't buy yeah. store-bought butter or mayonnaise or pesto or, you know what I mean? Like, and all those kind of things have now evolved into the vegan market. I think that I, I get very envious and like when I read through people's recipes and I'm like, damn. Or, you know, it's like I will put it, I'll save it, but sometimes I think it might just be too complicated because I've got to make the butter or I've got to make this. And, yeah. and butter and is the same. Yeah, yeah. No, and it's it's really funny, actually, because, you know, I, it's one of the things that has made transitioning to being vegan really, really easy. <laughs> but I was actually catching myself out over the last month that I've become quite... It's really easy in England to be a junk food vegan. It's really easy to eat all of the worst sorts of food. And actually, when I when I first went vegan, you know, it was definitely like enhancing what I was eating. But we've definitely caught on this year because there's so many products and you go in the supermarket. So you're like, oh, it's got vegan written on it. I need to eat it. And then I'm like, no, I don't need to keep eating all of this food just because they've made it vegan. And it's like even today when we popped into our local supermarket, they've got three different areas where they've got shelves dedicated. So they've got like two areas in the fridge dedicated to like there's there's about now 10 different types of vegan cheese in the supermarket there's so much choice and they've got like a festive selection pack so you can have like the blue cheese the smoked cheese you can have the the mozzarella the fake mozzarella or the fake feta they've got all of those options They've got like the vegan creams. They've got all of this stuff. We've literally surrounded by it. And I I was saying to Donna, like, that's it. Actually, what I'm going to do for January is go back to my roots a little bit and say, right, all of this this process stuff is going and I'm going to go back to being sort of whole food vegan, you know, and dial back that because there's a bit too much convenient stuff. But it's it's part of our lifestyle, though, isn't it? It's it's really hard. 
I, I must admit, I don't like cooking to be a chore because I've always loved cooking and I yeah. think being vegan is something where I feel that it's even made me evolve as as a cook, you know, like someone yeah. like a, a, from the, as young as I can remember, I was always in the kitchen. And so yeah. I like the the experimenting and like creating side of it. But sometimes I'm just like, oh, I just wish I had something in the freezer that I could just throw in there, you know, not have yeah. to make it all yeah. from scratch. And I found these tofu things on Amazon, actually. And I was so excited because I thought I'm just going to buy one packet of that, which has got two burgers in there and just throw it in the freezer. And then the, the postage was like four times as much as what the, the actual burgers yeah. were. And I was like, you know what? I'm just going to make it myself. I can always make them and freeze them anyway. I kind of do that. Yeah. To be honest, I love going out, but I do like the the fact that all the food that is, you know, when you cook yourself, how the, the not only the love that goes into it, but you just know yeah. what's in it, you know, exactly yeah. what's in it as well. So have you always loved cooking? Is it something that you've done your whole life? Yeah. 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 I mean, I've, I've been cooking as long as I can remember. My mum used to be a cook. Um, so very much in like sort of like care homes for the elderly. So cooking on mass, but preparing sort of like really good home cooked meals. So she always brought me up in the kitchen. She was always into baking cakes as well. So we were always baking cakes. We were always cooking, you know, from a very early age, I could easily like make a sponge, make some pastry, make some tarts. I could do all of that basic cooking. Um, but my mum didn't have and still hasn't got much of a palate for like outside of the sort of her wheelhouse when it comes to cooking so she does all of her baking she does a lot of like the sort of like the British staple foods but then when I was going to sort of like school and sort of like in those early teenage years I was getting into a lot more sort of like different cultural flavors into different world flavors and I did sort of like food technology as one of my like GCSE subjects and that got me into really experimenting. My favorite thing was to take one thing and take another thing and like stick them together, whether they work or don't work. <laughs> I remember um, I didn't really like my cooking teacher or well, I, I didn't dislike her, but she seemed to dislike me. There was definitely a mismatch. So it's like, <laughs> When we were doing a project, she hated curry. So I'm like, I'm going to make my project on curry for the whole last year. And I was doing like creating curries, but then turning them into pies and pastries, you know, so trying to sort of do fusion of food. So I've always liked to sort of take ideas and then see where I can go with it. It was one of the things that was holding me back. So I've always sort of been really into food and then going into sort of becoming vegan, I was thinking, is it going to limit my options because I'm taking out food group? And then when I started researching the food, I was like, oh, good grief. No, this means I've got to be really much more creative <laughs> because then you've got to recreate all of that stuff. And so many times we've sat down and said like, well, what should we, because we always sort of like plan out what we're going to have in the week to get the right food in so that we don't like waste food. So we'll often sit down and say, like, well, what's one of the favorite meals we used to have? Right. Okay. Well, how can we have that now, but make it completely vegan? Nice. And, you know, I've, I've always tried to sort of take high, what would have been sort of unhealthy food and make them healthy. So now I'm just taking those foods taking them into their healthy and then taking them to plant-based instead. Just taking it a whole other notch up, yeah? Whole other yeah, so it's just increased my creativity. And it's like so many times I post food and people sort of say, I, I want to eat your food. How do you come up with the ideas? And even like someone that I worked with when we was at a party a few weeks ago, my work colleague was like, I really want to try tofu, but I'm terrified of it. And I said, there's nothing to be scared of. It's just tofu. I said, you just got to know how to cook it. And she's like, I wouldn't even know how to buy the right one. And I said, right, well, I said, come round and I'll cook your tofu. So she came round for dinner last night. And I know that she likes sort of like um, Caribbean influences. Yeah. So I literally sort of did sort of like nice jerk seasoning, marinated the tofu, did it with like the rice and peas. We had some like roasted plantain we had some nice like sauteed vegetables to go with it 
And she was like, oh, my God, this is so good. She said, if someone like you would come and cook for me, I would go vegan. <laughs> so it, just trying to do it that way. But I just love sharing my food with other people. Yeah. And obviously, Instagram, it's it's pretty much my hobby of just sharing what I create. I don't sometimes it doesn't look the best because it is genuinely what is on my plate I put up there (laughs) but I just want to show people what I'm eating and saying this is what I eat on a daily basis this is my food if it inspires you great yeah yeah I I totally agree I think it's very important um, to be able to help other people that might be questioning it and I know I was one of those people like used to look at people that were eating really healthy kind of and I don't even know if it was vegan but I know that it was just kind of like sometimes I would think oh that's like really weird but it's that that thing that's in your brain that's telling you that this this other stuff is weird food but it's not it's actually more natural isn't it so yeah Yeah. and and that's the thing I never saw I never saw vegan food as weird because I just knew that it was without the animals but so many people do see it as weird food. Yeah. And I've had that reaction like, oh, well, because um, I, I made a joke about going out soon and she was like, yeah, but I'd want to go out somewhere normal to eat. I wouldn't want to go out and just eat vegan food. And I went, but you eat vegetables. <laughs> and I'm like, it's vegetables. It's not vegan food. It's just yeah. food without animals in it. You know, it's not a new food group. We didn't invent new food. <laughs> We just, we just cultivated it differently. You know, yeah. it's funny yeah. because, um, like, the, it's the same with sugar, isn't it? Like, things like sweets, because um, I, I don't know, I didn't particularly go in my head, I have to stop eating sugar. But for somewhere along the lines, because of the recipes that I was looking at, probably didn't have sugar in them, it was, you know, more, you know, maple syrup, agave, and other types of natural sweeteners. And so I realized after some time of being vegan that all of a sudden I was, wasn't eating sugar. And the only thing that I was having was alcohol. And that, and then eventually I sort of like stopped having that as well. But I, I realized because it actually has a really adverse effect, effect on me now but the thing is when I make a dessert most of the time people will like go oh wow it looks amazing and then they realize oh it's vegan oh it's gluten-free oh and then you see the like the thought the process go through their head like you know will I won't I and then they they end it's like with trepidation you know like they might it's not everyone but it's definitely some people I started on a weight loss journey. It was sort of like 2013, so it was quite a while ago. Yeah. And I'd literally got to the point where I weighed just shy of 20 stone. You know, I, I knew I was I was in my late 20s. And, you know, when you kind of sort of take stock of your life and you think, if I carry on with... I was eating all of the wrong foods, doing everything wrong. I wasn't active at all. I was in a really, like, I worked in a call centre, so I was sat down, sedentary job, and I thought, I am going to end up eating my way into an early grave. There was no way around it. I was like, this is not, and I just, there was a photo that was taken of me at one of my sort of close friends' weddings, and when I saw the picture back, I looked at that and I thought, oh, good grief. And I thought, if you don't do something, this is this is the route to nowhere. And like in my family, there's sort of like history of sort of like diabetes and sort of like glaucoma and just those sort of like degenerative stuff that, you know, diet plays a massive part of. Yeah. Um, So I sort of joined um a local weight loss group that we've got here and started that with my weight loss and to start with it was literally that was pre-vegan I was I was losing weight and then actually now I've turned that into my career um because I lost over seven stone doing that Um, you know and it, it just changed my life and I now I now sort of run classes and support people on their weight loss journey. And I actually support other weight loss consultants in my local area as a mentor to consultants. So I'm kind of like the local area manager yeah. um, as well as running my own classes. And then in the process of doing that, I started to get 
uh, started to do exercise. I sort of like live at the gym. So I've become really sort of fit as well as losing weight. And I found the more I lost weight and then sort of obviously I was eating healthy food. And then the more I was exercising, the more I could listen to my body. If yeah. that makes sense. I know Absolutely. that'll make sense. Yeah. <laughs> so I started because I was listening to some of your previous podcasts on where you were talking about the, the history of the Ayurveda and all of that. And it's like, I, I'm totally, I, I don't get all of that, but I'm on the way there with it. I was sort of like just being able to have a conversation and listen to what my body was telling me. And then obviously we started going on like the holiday to Mexico and I was starting to do yoga. And then he was sort of planting the seeds of veganism. And to start with, it really definitely did help with my weight loss because I I just sort of was eating a lot more healthy. I've got to say this whole COVID and the world going into lockdowns and where we are, they close like all of the gyms so I couldn't go and exercise. That properly messed with my mind over the last couple of years. So that was a real struggle to keep that going. And especially when we have such an abundance of sort of like vegan junk food. But still, like the health benefits, aside from the weight loss, um, you know, I'm just so in tune with my body And it's like I had really bad polycystic ovaries and it's like here, the trouble is with sort of like you go to the doctors and it's like they'll look at you and say, we need to lose weight. And you're like, okay, that's I get that. But they're they're not often interested in treating the cause. They want to just treat the symptom. So they're like, right, okay, so your cycle's really awful. It's either birth control or fertility tablets. And I'm like, hold on, I don't want to go on all these hormones. I want to try and fix this. But everything was wrong. Um, And I tried to sort of, I had a lot of IBS issues as well. So a lot of digestive problems, which again, I think is sort of not the same as yours, but similar. I'd been experimenting with like trying to cut out different things. But the trouble was, is I I tried to cut out dairy, but obviously I was still eating meat. I was trying to cut out some meat, but I was still having dairy. I tried to cut out gluten, but I was still having dairy. So nothing seemed to fit. And then, you know what, when I went vegan, obviously there's a bit where you've got to sort of like transition all of your microbiome and your body gets used to it all. But the minute I transitioned, I kind of like my IBS almost completely resolved and I've never been more in sync in terms of like my polycystic ovaries. All of that is because I'm not eating all of these artificial hormones that are in meat and dairy. Yeah, I can just be in sync with my own body and like literally to the point of it's an exact science every single month and it's just solved the polycystic ovaries it's solved all of those like IBS troubles I always sort of say like now I just I don't get sick (laughs) you know touch wood I don't want to tempt fate but you know I just (laughs) don't get ill you know I live really fit and healthy and I mean one of the things I've always done is give blood you know I'll always do that And, um, you know, my iron markers have been absolutely phenomenal, you know, without the need to sort of supplement or do anything. So I'm I'm literally as fit as anything now. That is an amazing but very inspirational story that you just told us because, um, like, I, I agree with you and that's kind of my point in what I'm trying to do with the podcast is to get people to understand about listening to their body because so many times going to the doctors and it's it's kind of not their fault because of the similarities with all the symptoms between, you know, all these d- disorders and diseases, but it's also again what we're taught it's like what we're fed into our mind you know so it's kind of like taking back some of that ownership and realizing and just to know how the body works it's probably just to eat for the sake of eating because we know we're meant to eat three meals a day and we're meant to eat meat and we're meant to eat dairy because it makes this and it does that for us and blah 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 so yeah it is changing that mindset it's how you feel when you eat food as well like you know with like the sugar you i i now know If I go out and eat high sugar or high fat meal, I will probably be comatose on a sofa later on, you know, because I know that if I eat sort of like lots of sugar, it literally makes me feel depleted and tired. 
And it's almost like my body going into shock because it's that that sort of high and then low and your blood sugars go out of whack. Yeah. And, you know, like when you're eating healthily, when you're eating quite spread out well, your energy levels are so much more consistent because you're not giving it all of these peaks and troughs and you're not crashing and burning all the time. Exactly. And I think too, a lot of the time we're in denial. I mean, I know that I'm far more conscious of it. And I know even recently Mexico has proved to be a little bit harder for me in regards to like getting food, the foods that I want. It's been quite a challenge, but I will never stop being vegan. But sometimes I will like, you know, might eat bread or I might eat something that, you know, maybe does have a little bit of sugar in it. And then I just, I just feel the effects straight away, like immediately. Yeah. As, you yeah. know, as opposed to how I used to be where it would just felt like it was all the time and I could never understand why some days I felt bad and some days I felt okay and so on like that. But, yeah, it's, it, it is, it's all down to intuition about really yeah. understanding ourselves and everything, yeah. But, yeah, so I work um, with a company that's based in England and, and sort of Ireland and Scotland. It's Slimming World. And, I mean, that... It, I work with people on all different types of diets but I mean obviously wherever I can encourage people to eat more vegetables and what I really like actually is it's a really supportive way of eating where you are letting people sort of there isn't the you can't have this you can't have that and we don't ever limit how much people can eat if they need to because you know if you go back to sort of like the the prior version of myself that was really overweight um I remember when sort of seeing a dietitian um and being told well you can only eat like this amount of cheese and this and that and it felt like a million miles away from where I was with my diet. It felt insurmountable. And I think so often people try and take people's diet where they are and put them into this ideal diet instantaneously. And I focus on, do you know what? Let's get you one step closer to a better diet. And then once you've made that choice, let's get you another step closer. So we don't ask people to massively restrict their food, but don't go out and buy a jar of sauce, make your own sauce. You know, know what your ingredients you're cooking with and then make sure that while you're eating things like the rice and the pasta or whatever, you're going to be eating lots of vegetables to complement that. So that you're eating a really good ratio of the different types of food. And it's all about giving yourself then an opportunity to listen to yourself. Kind of think, right, what what am I eating? How much do I need to eat? And I think you naturally eat less if you're eating a nice wide variety of food and you're eating healthier food. Because, of course, vegetables are filled with fiber. They fill you up. If you're eating just solid starch and stuff you can eat lots of it because it's not going to fill you up so that's kind of what I do on sort of like a day-to-day basis is coach people through that but then that doesn't sort of do anything for sort of like my vegan side so to speak so then that's where my like Instagram is like my little outlet just to show how amazing my vegetable food is nice and is it the, the program that you do with your clients? Does that include like the psychological side of it about emotional eating and binge eating? And yeah, where it comes from? totally. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's rooted in, it's a company that's been going over 50 years. Yeah. And it's literally, we've got like the three aspects. So where we focus on the nutrition, but that's almost like the smallest part of what we do. We provide guidance on that. But then we literally help people with all of the psychological elements of eating and then obviously like movement as well. So trying to get people with a healthy lifestyle and we don't tell people like, right, you've got to go. You've got to go run. You've got to go gym. It's just again, we'll work on like, can you just move your body five minutes more today (laughs) than you were last week? So it's kind of like taking small steps, but it's. It's the psychology, it's it's the nutrition, it's the movement. And I really enjoy doing that because going back to when I left school, I went to university in Derby and did a degree in psychology. 
And then never really kind of took that any further, but I have all of that grounding in psychology and then never really had anything to do with it. And then I kind of got stuck into the world of needing to go to work, working in the NHS, just getting bogged down with stuff. But then going through my own weight loss journey allowed me to literally link that background in psychology, take my love of fitness and then put it all together and I get to talk about it all day, every day, which is perfect. <laughs> That's great. And I'm not going to get bored of talking about food and psychology and weight loss and healthy eating and, and exercises. I'm never going to get bored of that. So I can do that all day, every day. That's awesome. I know what you mean, though. There are things in my past where I never thought they would correlate where something I did. And all of a sudden, even with my English teaching, you know, phonetics, knowing phonetics is like now I base my whole English teaching around pronunciation, around phonetics. So, yeah, it's it, I, I love those little stepping stones that kind of get you to where you're meant to be yeah it's really funny when you don't see it happening until all the pieces fall into place and then you kind of look back and go oh well of course that was going to happen yeah (laughs) again with my vegan journey I'd gone through all of these little things and all of the seeds were planted around me but nobody could tell me what to do but the minute I sort of finished and sort of said right that's what I want to do and I sat up and looked and I was like oh good grief how could I have not because it was it was surrounding me it was going to happen but yeah it's been really nice to talk to you I've really really enjoyed it but I do have one question the the one that is the last question again in five words or less give your best advice for someone who might be thinking about doing the January yeah don't try and be perfect (laughs) perfect (laughs) you know what I wish someone had told me that to start with the first time I had something and then I read the the, you know made an assumption that it was vegan and then read that there was some pesky like lactose in there and I I beat myself up about it Uh, it's like do you know what every step in the right direction it takes so long to learn all of those sort of like where these these milk powders can be hidden so yeah yeah, don't don't try and be perfect that's very good advice because yeah I mean I was thinking before I I probably did it when I went gluten-free because I was gluten-free before I was vegan and the the label reading is like just it just becomes part of your life doesn't it it's like and you get to know all those things like I picked but then do that in another country. <laughs> it's like with, with this, like my, I was in the supermarket the other day because I want to do something for Christmas, like like a takeaway kind of sweets and yeah. stuff. And I know it doesn't for me. I won't be eating the eating them. But I was trying to find something that didn't have gelatin in it. So yeah, yeah. It's really hard to find anything. So I was like, okay, there we go. Back to try and find something that I can make between now and Christmas. <laughs> it's got yeah, all this. this thing. so yeah it's lovely to meet you do you have anything you'd like to say before we finish do you know what really thank you for having me on board when you said you you were interested in having a conversation with me I was kind of sat there thinking why what have (laughs) I got to say you know I've never done anything like this before it's the first time I've done like a podcast yeah. And I was just taken aback. But yeah, it's I, I the, the group that we've got where we've connected with people all over the globe. Yeah. I was talking to someone about it and they were like, oh, my God, that's fantastic. It's like, I, do you know what? I love the community that we've got yeah, where we can all support and, and jump into each other's stuff. And I think, do you know what? It, it's it's such important to have these sort of like global conversations. I think it's, it's going to make massive differences. So just thank you so much for asking me. You're welcome. And do you think that, because I'm going to tell you that you actually have a lot to share. You're taking yeah. what you've learned and you're sharing it with others. And, you know, knowledge is so powerful. And I think yeah. that you do have a lot to say. So I hope that this won't be the last time you get interviewed on a podcast. I hope you get to do many more. <laughs> so it was lovely to meet you, as I said, and yeah. I will um, say goodbye and uh, cool. namaste. See you soon. Namaste. Take care. Bye. I was totally inspired by Susan and what she's been doing and especially her own journey through weight loss and nutrition. Remember, it's never too late to change it up or to take control of your health and to be the very best version of yourself. So I hope that you live your life in good health, eat lightly, breathe deeply, live moderately, 
cultivate cheerfulness and maintain an interest in life. Namaste.